Thorson, and this is a Compute Cycle Deep Dive for Tuesday, January 24th, 2012, brought to you by Activity Incorporated. We're taking a little bit of a break today, going out to dinner after we've set up our IPv6 server and tunnel for ShmooCon. Today we're going to explain to you how to set up your own IPv6 tunnel, and we're going to hack it just a little bit in order to set up support for multiple networks. ShmooCon has had IPv6 connectivity for the past four years, however we've only had it on the open Wi-Fi network. This year we're hoping to expand IPv6 coverage to more networks, and that requires a little bit of hacking of the IPv6 router that we use each year. Our IPv6 connectivity is brought to us by Freenet6 via the GoGoC client. So the first thing we need to do is get the GoGoC client. The first thing we'll need to do is an apt-get install Go, go see. You'll see that it will also suggest to install the RADVD package, which is the router advertisement daemon. After it installs, you'll see that it complains about the router advertisement daemon.configuration file not existing or being empty, and it will not start the router advertisement daemon. This is just fine, as go, go see will take care of that for us. The next thing that we're going to need is an account at Freenet 6. If you type in freenet6.net, it'll take you to the gogoc or the gogo6.com domain. It might be a little confusing because there's a social part and then there's the part where you can sign up for a free IPv6 tunnel. We've posted a link on ComputeCycle taking you directly to the account signup page. Register for an account and that's all there is to it. Now that we have gogoc installed, there are a few changes that we need to make to the configuration file. So we'll go into the slash etsy slash gogoc directory and edit the gogoc.conf file. The first thing we need to change is adding our user ID and password. Now you can do this anonymously for the tunnels, but I would suggest getting user ID and password because then your IPv6 address stays the same, and for our purposes it allows us to be a router. So here we'll just add in our freenet6 username. And down here, we'll add in our Freenet6 password. We scroll down below, and you see that there's two different servers that we can log into. The first one is anonymous, and that's if you don't want to make an account. And the second one is authenticated. Authenticated is actually a round-robin DNS query that comes back with different servers. Now, there's a few servers, Singapore, I think Taipei, and Montreal. I've had some issues with the round robin DNS giving me different servers every time, so what I like to set this to, especially in North America, is Montreal. That's the location of the nearest IPv4 to IPv6 node. The next thing I like to edit is the authentication method. Here they have anonymous, but since we have a username and password, we're not going to use anonymous. The default is any, but I like to set this to the past DSS 3 des one option, making sure that the plain option is never used. So we'll comment in auth method and just copy in pass DSS 3 des one We're going to scroll down just a little bit and we get down to host type equals host. If we were just doing this on one computer, we could use this. However, we want to use it as a router. So we'll go ahead and get rid of host, and in here we'll put router. This automatically changes the prefix length that we request from Freenet6, but we'll specify it in here just in case. So in here we'll put 56. That will give us 8 bits of address space to use for routing, so essentially 00 to FF. For our network, we're actually going to be advertising on multiple networks. However, this is the part where GoGoC doesn't necessarily understand that. So for here, we're just going to put ETH0, as that's our default Ethernet interface. Last, at the very bottom, this is something you'll probably just want to set as needed. Um, I like to set the, con the logging very high. So down here for the log console. I usually turn that up to 3 along with the file and the syslog so that I can see what's going on. Once the router and the client start to operate as you'd expect, you can go ahead and change these values back to 0 or 1 or just leave them in the syslog. 
Those are all the changes that we need to make to the stock GoGoC client. Now we'll edit the template that GoGoC uses to start the router advertisement daemon. The router advertisement daemon in IPv6 is kind of a replacement for DHCP. It's for auto configuration. The GoGoC client thinks you're just working on one network, but since we have three additional networks we want to broadcast IPv6 advertisements on, we have to do some editing. Normally, we'd go in and we'd edit the router advertisement daemon configuration file, radvd.conf. However, since GoGoC makes this file dynamically based upon whatever prefix you get from the tunnel broker, it generates it on the fly. So what we have to do is we have to go and find the file that actually creates the router advertisement daemon configuration file on the fly. In this case, it is kept in user share gogo c template and it's called linux.sh so we'll go ahead and edit that file down on line 141 is the first change that we're going to make this is where gogo c removes the addresses that it set up to do the tunnel brokering and in this case it's doing an if config then the interface, which would normally be ETH0, INET6, delete, and then the address. Here, we're going to be adding in some lines. So exec, no check, and we want to run the standard if config, just like they have there. But our secondary interfaces are on VLAN, so here we're going to put VLAN 900, INET6, delete, and then our prefix, because we've signed up for an account, we know what that is going to be, 05 Charlie 0 1106 6590 colon colon 1 slash 64. So these two bits in here are what we actually get to use for subnetting. So this we have everything from 6500 to 65 FF. So we'll copy this line paste it three more times and we'll change this for VLAN 901 and VLAN 903 and we'll go over here and we'll change our addresses to 6591 and 6593 these are just subnets that I picked so I could easily see which VLAN was on which IPv6 address space so this is the part of the script that takes care of taking down the interfaces now we'll go to the part of the script that takes care of setting them up. So here you can see adding prefix to TSP home interface. So here we need to add a line exec if config and then the interface which again VLAN 900 add 2001 Charlie 0 1106 6590 colon colon one slash 64 and make two additional for our other networks and we'll save that and the last thing that we need to do is down here where it's actually writing the configuration file for the router advertisement daemon so rtadvd.conf made by gogoc client you can see all it really cares about is the first prefix on that first interface so this would set up eth0 so in our case we need to add just a few more lines in here so interface vlan 900 right bracket and then we can copy most of this stuff from up here and that's what i'm going to do to save some time and our prefix is going to be the 2001 Charlie 0, 1106-6590, colon, colon, slash, 64. So the reason we don't have the 1 in here is because we're not setting up an interface. We're setting up a subnet. So it's just colon, colon. Um, we take the standard items from down here. And we would repeat this again for VLAN 901 with 6591 and VLAN 903 for 6593. 
So that's it for configuring multiple networks on the IPv6 GoGo C client. It's a bit of a hack, but hey, we're going to a hacker convention. If you have any questions or comments, or for links to everything we talked about today, visit ComputeCycle.com for Tuesday, January 24th, 2012. If you see me at ShmooCon, feel free to ask questions and I can even show you the setup. You can email us at feedback at ComputeCycle.com and you can follow us on Twitter at ComputeCycle. I'm Brett Thorson. Thank you for watching this ComputeCycle deep dive, which, along with my participation at ShmooCon, is brought to you by Exivity Incorporated. Thank God.